different uh, presentation than maybe you might expect uh, at a uh, largely coastal and marine uh, gathering, but we did talk this morning about the importance of watersheds to the full understanding, so uh, perhaps this will be fine. Um, I've uh, taken on more and more of a role in the sustainable communities sort of planning file uh, this year, and so it'll reflect uh, that, but also uh, in New Brunswick we don't have far to go to get to the coast, and in, in fact we are really all coastal communities if you come right down to it. Uh, people who, for example, live inland, they often have a cottage at the, at the shore or they will, know, they will have family uh, in other communities that are, are uh, basically coastal communities. So in the meantime, I'll try and give you a little bit of background on our sustainable communities approach and uh, then talk a little bit. I'll use it as an opportunity to update you on a couple of things, including our coastal policy, uh, the RAC projects that we've been involved with, and uh, provincial planning policy and a couple of other things. So. I'll go through it like that. But uh, I'll just take you through some of the background. What is a sustainable community? Well, we, we basically use the Brutland Commission uh, concept still. We think about the present, but we also think about the future. And certainly we uh, try and integrate the social, the economic, and the environmental side of things. Uh, there was a pretty good uh, explanation of sustainable sustainability a few years ago at the Rio conference. It was the concept of enough for everyone forever, and I don't think you can beat that. It's a pretty good, pretty good uh, synopsis of exactly what it is we want to accomplish in this whole sustainability file. So here's these two little guys getting getting their their clams uh, and their ability to do that in their in their uh, lifetime. Uh, that should be maintained for them. So we've got this simple concept of bringing the economic the social and the environmental together, basically for a new bottom line, for business, for environment, for all, all of our different things that we do as human beings. So uh, the characteristics of a sustainable community or a sustainable coastal community, again, these are things you'll all be familiar with. Basically a good quality of life, uh, ability to live within the caring capacity of the environment and of the community, the community surroundings. Uh, basically supplying basic needs for the citizenry and also for the citizenry of a community, the sense of belonging to their particular community. So these are all concepts that we want to promote and of course we want to have enough money, we want to have good governance and so on. But there's lots of challenges to sustainability of New Brunswick communities, and I'm sure this is uh, applicable to the other provinces as well. Uh, basically, the two things I want to focus on in this particular list are the idea of guiding development to the right place. We struggle so much in our department and in our province of trying to keep people from building where they put themselves essentially in harm's way. And uh, this has been, uh, I'm sure you've been watching our, our struggles with wetlands and defining where wetlands are and uh, uh, getting an easy relationship with developers so that they will realize the, the importance of wetlands. In the coastal context, it's basically about coastal features, coastal wetlands, coastal dunes. We have examples of people who build on beaches and, and try and get away with it uh, without permitting and so on. And then we have flooding issues and we have storm surge issues, all those things that have been around for people who live in coastal environments for a long time. And then at the bottom there is this whole uh, new concept, <coughs> not new anymore but still uh, on everybody's mind, is the idea of climate change. And of course it has profound effects for the coastal environment. And again, things like coastal flooding and then this uh, worrisome concept of sea level rise. Many of our communities, the waves are basically battering at their doors. Uh, we have uh, Logo Lay would be a good example in New Brunswick of where a lot of their infrastructure is built right hard against the seashore. So basically what I try and do is focus on what a community can do to be more sustainable. We have two types of communities in the province. We have the, the Almies, the Monktons and the St. Johns and so on, which have, uh, which have the ability to build sustainability into their programming. And then on the other side, we have the very, very small communities, the towns and villages, 
which can get funding from various sources, but usually they're uh, you know, pretty tight on the budget and they basically have trouble uh, trying to take on bigger projects, things like green planning and so on. So we're going to try and uh, help them out with that. The three steps that we want communities to take, and which they mostly do take uh, when they get into uh, sustainability planning, are uh, basically adopting sustainability principles uh, involving the public, and uh, that's a very important aspect, of course, of democracy, but also making things that are essentially action plans work well. And then, of course, planning for action. So the first one I'll focus on is adopting sustainability principles. And uh, I have l lots of examples from New Brunswick. Uh, there are the Melbourne principles, which you can look up online, uh, which are very, very complicated, and some communities go that route. Our sustainable Sackville, uh, they have just finished their integrated community sustainability planning, and they picked a simple route. They basically said we want to do this in a balanced way. We want to basically build on our strengths and our assets and our communities, and we want to pay attention to nature. We want to make sure that we're basically uh, not only accommodating nature, but living within nature in our, in our future community. And of course, they want to have uh, their activities community-based and, and involving the public. So that's the uh, sustainability principles side. Once you've established principles, then you can go on to the next steps. And uh, involving the public, of course, uh, I don't think any of us have to be convinced that that's a necessary action. But uh, some people still do. This is a, a concept of basically involving people in the decisions that affect them. We have all kinds of examples, everything from involving uh, young people in subdivision planning to working with uh, communities to build green plans and sustainability plans uh, to working with our watershed groups there. So achieving a sustainable community means involving the public. And that means paying attention to interactions, paying attention to who your partners should be. We talked about that a bit this morning. So uh, people may get around the table and they don't necessarily use the same words for things, or they spend a lot of time trying to understand one another's bottom lines, that type of thing. And uh, we, we have some skills in our department, especially since we've wa worked with watershed groups, now I want to transfer this to working to, with uh, communities and municipalities, paying attention to group process, helping them, helping them to build capacity with respect to process. Because if you can get your consensus building right, if you can get your, your process and your decision making right, it takes you a long way into avoiding conflict and so on. So basically the idea is to involve people in the community in setting down those priorities and integrating between the social, the economic, and the uh, environmental interests. And uh, the third part of this is, of course, getting them to work together to implement, to basically build their action plans and then uh, to actually implement those plans and to solve some of the problems. So the third component of this is planning for action. And in New Brunswick, and I know in Nova Scotia and uh, in the other provinces as well, this often takes the form of a municipality wanting to do green planning, and sometimes it's uh, wanting to do integrated community sustainability planning, which I'll explain the difference between those two in a minute. And then there are other plans and projects uh, striving for sustainability that involve communities, so I'll be talking about some of them too. So the first thing is, what is the difference between all these types of plans? Uh, well, the Integrated Community Sustainability Plans, that was connected to the uh, gas tax a few years ago, and uh, FCM has, made, has be, you know, been a, a player in that. Now, in New Brunswick, we did a kind of, well, it was an interesting approach, I suppose. In order to leverage the gas tax money for municipalities, we went with getting the uh, Enterprise Network to create regional plans. And it really kind of backfired because they really didn't know what community sustainability plans were. Nova Scotia had a good template. We didn't have a template here. So we got everything from strategic plans to uh, 
uh, I don't know what they're worth. <laughs> There's all kinds of them anyway. But not many of them are usable by individual communities because individual communities have their own identity. After this decision was made to do regional plans, some communities decided they really needed a sustainability plan of their own, and FCM has uh, subsequently done some funding of that, or they've gone to other places for funding. For example, the funding model forest, forest is funding a very small component of the Patakodiak uh, Integrated Sustainability Plan that's going on right now. So they're all over the place there, and if anybody wants to look at an, you know, an individual <coughs> plan, you can show them. Basically, a, a green plan or an integrated community sustainability plan has these kind of components. They look at the, uh, the basic visioning for the community. Uh, they establish um, uh, some of the principles of sustainability that I talked about before. They identify their issues, and then they basically come up with an action plan. And some of these action plans are extremely vigorous. Uh, Shippagina, for example, I think has uh, over 90 individual actions. And now each of those actions is a program in, in and of itself. And then the uh, issue is to implement. Uh, well, how are they going to go about implementing these plans?